Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about sequences. Sequences are actually really simple. They're just a series of commands that your FarmBot will execute one after the other until the sequence is complete. You'll use sequences to tell your FarmBot how to do pretty much everything from picking up seeds to watering plants to taking photos. And because they're completely customizable, sequences and the sequence editor are a really powerful way for you to make your FarmBot do pretty much anything you want without writing any code. So let's get started. Once you're on the sequences page, press the plus button to create a new sequence. This will open up the sequence editor with the sequence loaded into the center column here, and it will also show the commands available to add to the sequence in the right column. Note that if you're using a small screen, such as on a smartphone, the commands will be hidden behind the add command button in another screen. So let's run through each of the commands that are available and discuss what they do and what their options are. To start, we have the move to command. The move to command will instruct your farm bot to move to an absolute position within the coordinate system. You can select the location from the dropdown and there's a variety of options available, including custom coordinates, which would just be X, Y, Z that you'd specify, any of your tools or seed containers, any of the plants that are currently in the map, and also map points, which could be a weed, for example, or some other point that you've specified in the Farm Designer map. There's also an option to choose a location variable, though we'll cover that in another video. There are also additional options hidden behind the More dropdown. So you can use X, Y, and Z offsets. This would be useful, for example, if you'd like to move your farm bot to the location of a plant, but offset above the plant for taking a photo, for example. And there's also an option to specify the speed as a percentage of the maximum in case you want to slow your farm bot down for specific movements that are more delicate or need more precision. The next command available is the move relative command. The move relative command will instruct FarmBot to move a certain amount from its current position. For example, this would be useful when pulling a tool out of the tool slot. You can specify the distance FarmBot will move along the X, Y, and Z axes, and also set the speed as a percentage of the maximum, again, for delicate or more precise operations. The control peripheral command instructs FarmBot to operate one of its peripherals, such as the vacuum pump, the solenoid valve, or the lighting systems. To use it, you simply select which peripheral you'd like to operate, choose which mode, either digital or analog, and which value you'd like to set the peripheral to. The read sensor command instructs FarmBot to take a reading from one of your FarmBot sensors. For example, you could use this to measure the soil moisture content at a specific location in your garden. Or you can use this with peripherals to check their state. For example, you could use the read sensor command to see if the lighting is turned on or off. When you read a sensor, You'll choose which one you want from this dropdown. You'll choose the mode, either digital or analog. And you can optionally apply a data label, which is like a tag for that data point, so that you can later look at all of the data with the same label to see how things are changing over time. For example, how the soil moisture in a specific location changes over time. The wait command is pretty self-explanatory. It will instruct FarmBot to wait a certain amount of time in milliseconds. This can be useful, for example, when you want to add some time in between two commands. So for example, you may turn on your solenoid valve to start watering a plant, and then you'd like to wait for two seconds or 2,000 milliseconds before turning the solenoid valve off. The send message command is also fairly self-explanatory. It instructs FarmBot to send a message. So you can type in whatever message you want, and there's also some special formatting that you can utilize to insert data into the message, such as FarmBot's current position. You can select which type of message this is, success, busy, warning, error, or information. And you can also choose which channels FarmBot should send this message to. By default, it will always send the message to the logs and the status ticker, 
but you can also have it send as a toast notification, which is a pop-up on the bottom of the screen, as an email, or you can have FarmBot speak the message if you have a speaker hooked up to its audio output. The find home command instructs your FarmBot to find the home position. This is different than going to the 000 coordinate position. And instead, it's going to instruct FarmBot to utilize its rotary encoders, end stops, or the stepper driver detection of stalls to find the home position. You can choose to have FarmBot find home on all axes or just one of the axes, X, Y, or Z. The if statement command is pretty cool. It allows your FarmBot to evaluate the situation and then determine whether to execute one sequence or a different one. For example, after measuring soil moisture, you could use the if statement command to water a plant more or less, depending on what the measured value of the soil moisture is. To use the if statement command, you'll first need to choose what you'd like your FarmBot to evaluate. You can choose X, Y, or Z position, the state of any of your peripherals, the values of any sensors, and even just the raw pins. Then you choose an operator, for example, is less than, is equal to, or is unknown, and a value. So let's run through a quick example. I'm gonna choose to evaluate my soil moisture sensor and if the value of the soil moisture sensor is greater than 500, the farm bot will be instructed to do nothing. And if it is less than 500, then the farm bot will be instructed to execute my water plant sequence. So this means that farm bot will water the plant if the soil is dry. To use the execute sequence command, all you have to do is select which subsequence you would like to execute. If the subsequence you've chosen requires a variable, then the variable form will pop up and you'll need to choose what value you'd like the subsequence to execute that variable with. For more information on variable usage, please refer to the variables video. The run farmware command will instruct your farm bot to run a specific farmware of your choosing. Simply make your selection in the drop down menu and then farm bot will execute that as part of the sequence. For more information on farmware, please see the farmware video. The take photo command will instruct your farm bot to take a photo and then it will upload it to the web app so that you can view it from the farmware page uh, and the photos widget. The mark as command allows your farm bot to change the state of one of the objects within the farm bot system. For example, after planting a seed, your farm bot can mark the plant as planted, or after picking up a tool, your farm bot can mark the tool as mounted to the tool mount. To use the mark as step, you simply choose which object you'd like to mark, for example, this spinach plant, and then you can choose how you would like to mark it. To add commands to your sequence, you can either drag and drop from the commands list or you can simply click the command to add it to the bottom of the sequence. Each command has several icons in the top right. Starting from the left is a question mark icon that has a tooltip for more information about that command, a trash can icon to delete the command from the sequence, a copy icon that allows you to copy a command in the sequence, and also some controls for moving a sequence step within the sequence. You can also drag and drop commands to reorder them within the sequence. And you can also rename the commands to give yourself notes for what the sequence is doing. 